Microplastics. Microplastics. Concern that plastic could be inside of our blood. Studies have detected microplastics in human placentas. The average person ingests enough microscopic pieces of plastic to make a brand new credit card every week. Look, I'm not trying to scare you or trigger you. This is not clickbait. But according to scientists right now, you could have plastic in your brain. But how? Well, in our modern world today, convenience is often linked with plastic, be it from the bottles we drink from to the synthetic fibres in our clothing. However, research now shows that microplastics, that is particles smaller than 5 millimetres in diameter, and nanoplastics, which are even smaller again, are not just environmental pollutants, but have also made it into our human bodies, into our blood, into our brains, and even our reproductive tissues. And they are negatively affecting our health. In this video, I'll tell you exactly how these plastics are getting into our bodies in the first place, what they are made of, and most importantly, what you can do to reduce your exposure to them. So let's dive in. So what are micro and nanoplastics? Well, microplastics are tiny fragments resulting from the breakdown of larger plastic items, while nanoplastics are smaller still, often measuring in the billions of a meter. These particles are so small that they easily escape detection by the naked eye. Yet modern analytical techniques such as spectroscopy and electron microscopy can now identify them. This technological leap has enabled scientists in recent years to detect plastic particles in samples that were previously considered to be clean, broadening our understanding of how pervasive these pollutants truly are. Studies continue to refine detection methods, ensuring that the data we gather is both accurate and sadly alarming. Groundbreaking studies over the last few years have documented the presence of micro and nanoplastics in human tissues. For instance, research published in the Environmental Science and Technology Journal detected microplastics in human blood, highlighting that these particles are not confined to the environment but are actively circulating in our systems. Another study from 2023 found evidence of microplastics in various human organs, including the liver and kidneys, suggesting that the body may serve as an unintended repository for these contaminants. Furthermore, investigations into brain tissue have shown that nanoplastics can cross the blood-brain barrier. Research in 2023 revealed that nanoplastics accumulate in brain tissues and may trigger inflammatory responses linked to neurodegenerative conditions. Similarly, studies have identified plastic particles in testicular tissues, raising concerns about their impact on reproductive health. This emerging body of evidence underscores a growing health risk that I believe is not fully appreciated. Okay, so where do these micro and nanoplastics come from in the first place? Well, a variety of everyday sources. Plastics from single-use items such as water bottles, food packaging and even disposable cutlery degrade over time, breaking into smaller and smaller pieces. Synthetic textiles, which release tiny fibres with every single wash, also contribute significantly to the pollution load. Tire wear from cars adds to airborne and roadside particulates, which can eventually settle in our water sources and our food chains. Recent reviews have confirmed that these diverse sources mean that microplastics are present virtually everywhere, from urban centres to the remotest parts of the globe. So what exactly are they made of? Well, at their core, these plastics are made from polymers, long chains of molecules that can be molded into a vast array of products. Common polymers include polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, and polyethylene terephthalate, or PET. These polymers are engineered for durability and resistance to degradation, which is why they persist in the environment for decades. Plus, during manufacturing, various chemical additives such as plasticizers, flame retardants and dyes are incorporated to improve performance and appearance. Over time, these additives can leach out, adding a toxic element to the micro and nanoplastics. When these particles enter the human body, they may release harmful chemicals that interfere with cellular functions, adding an extra layer of risk to an already concerning problem. 
The presence of micro and nanoplastics in human tissues is more than just a mere curiosity. It poses a serious potential health risk. Laboratory studies have demonstrated in recent years that these particles can trigger inflammatory responses, oxidative stress, and even cellular apoptosis, or cell death. Once inside the cells, these micro and nanoplastics can accumulate in organelles like mitochondria, impairing energy production and generating harmful reactive oxygen species. Such cellular stress is known to contribute to chronic diseases, including cardiovascular disorders, diabetes and even cancer. One especially concerning aspect is the ability of these nanoplastics to breach the blood-brain barrier. Now, once this protective barrier is crossed, these particles can then incite neuroinflammation and possibly contribute to the formation of plaques. These plaques are associated with neurodegenerative diseases. In addition, the detection of plastic particles in testicular tissue has raised red flags about their potential effects on fertility and hormonal balance. The evidence from these studies paints a stark picture of a pollutant that could have far-reaching consequences on human health. Microplastics and nanoplastics can enter the body through several pathways, making exposure almost inevitable in our modern-day society. The most common route is ingestion. Food items such as seafood, salt and even fresh produce can harbour these tiny particles either through environmental contamination or contact with plastic packaging. Studies have shown that drinking water, regardless of its source, can also contain trace amounts of microplastics, especially since many water treatment plants are not designed to filter out such small contaminants. Inhalation is another significant pathway. Airborne microplastics, which can originate from road dust, synthetic textiles or industrial emissions, are readily inhaled and deposited in our lungs. From there, they may enter the bloodstream and migrate to other parts of the body, including the brain. While dermal exposure, that is exposure through the skin, is less likely to lead to significant absorption, it is not entirely without risk, especially when products containing microplastics are applied directly to the skin. So what are some strategies for reducing exposure to these microplastics? While completely avoiding micro and nanoplastics in today's world is very challenging, there are still practical steps you can take to reduce your exposure. First of all, filter your water. Invest in high-quality water filters such as those using activated carbon or reverse osmosis, which have been shown to reduce the presence of microplastics in our drinking water. And regularly changing your filter can further ensure its effectiveness. Wear natural fibre clothing. Opt for clothing made from natural fibres like cotton, wool or linen rather than synthetic materials. If you do wear synthetic fibres, consider using a microfiber catching bag during laundry to minimise the shedding of fibres into the wastewater. Reduce reliance on processed and packaged foods, which are more likely to be contaminated with plastic particles. Whenever possible, choose fresh and whole foods and wash fruits and vegetables thoroughly to remove surface contaminants. Embrace reusable alternatives for water bottles, shopping bags and food containers. Small changes in daily habits can collectively reduce the overall production of plastic waste. Support policies and initiatives that aim to limit plastic production and improve waste management. Community efforts and political advocacy can drive systemic change that does benefit everyone. So the evidence is out there and it is clear. Micro and nanoplastics are no longer confined to our oceans or soil. They are now part of our own bodies. The detection of these tiny particles in human blood, brain tissues and reproductive organs serves as a stark reminder of the broader impact of plastic pollution. Although the problem may seem overwhelming, understanding the sources, the composition and health impacts of these micro and nanoplastics empowers us to take meaningful, actionable steps toward reducing exposure. By filtering our water, choosing natural fibres, opting for fresh foods and advocating for better waste management, we can all help mitigate the risks. 
Well, thank you for watching today. If you enjoyed this episode, like, subscribe and share with other people who you think might get value from it. And while you're there, check out this other video here.